Let's get started. Hi, you guys. My name is Chrissy Taylor, and this is Let's Chat. Thank you for joining me today. The show is every day at 4 p.m. Uh, every, not every day, every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you cannot watch live, although I think you should really, really try because it, it gets really, really good. If you can't watch live, it is um, posted here on my Facebook page where you can go back and watch all of the reruns. I am working on updating the website, so you will be able to go to the website and just click on all of this um, episodes. If you are visiting for the first time, thank you for joining me. Just to let you know, the goal of each and every show is to entertain, encourage, and enlighten you all. And I say it every week as I'm doing that for you all. I'm also doing it um, for myself. I'm enlightening myself as we're having the conversations. A couple of things that I'd like to make sure that I mention is to, um, to the newcomers. If you see me looking over here to the left, you can't see it in your screen now, but I'm not zoning out. This is where my tablet, I got it back from hubby, is this is where I can see the live feed. I can see myself. I can see your all's comments. I like to make sure I'm not skipping a beat when it comes to our conversations. And then here to the right, you can see my little laptop here. That's just my little teleprompter. Um, I try to make sure I'm organized and I'm sticking to my agenda. I'm not like up here rambling. Uh, if you could do me one favor, the bottom left, I believe it's at the bottom left. I say it every week, but it really is it. I believe it's at the bottom left of your screen. Actually, no. Wherever you see share, click it. I'd like you to please share um, the live feed right now. Or if you are not watching live and you're watching the rerun, share it and invite other people into our conversation. Hopefully that will get our audience even more open so our conversation can grow. I love to speak um, live with you all. Um, people do it recorded shows. I love it when it's live because... Um, Number one, it's um, raw. It's very raw. It's nothing I can like just take out. I've not had any disrespectful comments yet. Um, and another thing is that I like to for everyone to have their different opinions, right? So it's not like, well, because it's my show, my opinion is fact. A lot of times, I'll, I'll come into the conversation with one uh, thought or one opinion, and then someone will say, well, what about this? What about that? Have you thought about that? A lot of times, that changes my mind. So the more people, the merrier. We have a wonderful show. If you do not know right now, we are doing Let's Chat Summer Break because it's summer. Um, and so that just means that the show has a different agenda. It's much shorter. Usually it's 45 minutes to an hour. These, I try to make a half hour to 45 minutes, so they're just like snippets of a show. Um, just all fun stuff, really, really good stuff. I won't keep you guys long because hopefully you're spending time with your families, especially in the summer and on Sundays. So let's just get started. I am going to start, you guys, with the summer breaks. I've been doing summer treat, right? And I also have been lately um, really, really, really trying to eat more healthy than I have before. I'm not vegan. I'm not vegetarian. Um, I eat everything. Um, I don't, I try not to eat too much bread because that's like my weakness and I just can't stop. And I'm trying to watch it on the desserts. So here's a healthy snack I've always wanted to try. This is kale chips. So both of the snacks that I have today um, are 100 calories or less. So we have kale chips and we have sweet potato fries, which who hasn't had sweet potato fries? Um, the sweet potato fries I have tried. A lot of people just like throw them in the oven or, or fry them and just do salt and pepper. But a good ingredient to put on sweet potato fries, you guys, is paprika. And the fact that this is 100 calories for two sweet potatoes. So I didn't do like a whole load. The 100 calories is if you make two sweet potatoes. And mine were probably about medium size. Um, anything over that is over 100 calories. Um, and if you're not, I don't count calories, but I still try to be mindful of my calorie intake. So sweet potato fries is a really good filling snack. If you, um, instead of regular fries, instead of the uh, potato chips that I love and can't stop eating also, try you some sweet potato fries. You put them on the, in the oven on 450. Um, you drizzle them with olive oil or whatever oil you want. Here, love, you can have some. Drizzle them with olive oil. I do sea salt, pepper, um, and paprika. I love to put uh, onion powder and garlic powder on stuff, but I didn't do it for those. And they're, they're always like a hit. You can never go wrong with sweet potato fries. The fact that they're 100, <laughs> right, April? The fact that they're 100 calories makes me feel even better eating them. And when I go to restaurants, I order sweet potato fries over regular french fries anyways. Um, so, I've never tried these kale chips before. I've always wanted, I made these. You can buy them. I made these. 
I like kale. So, I guess I'll like them. Same thing, I put olive, drizzled them with olive oil. Hi, April. My hair is live. Thanks, girl. I drizzled them with olive oil. I put the oven on 275. Drizzled them with olive oil. I did salt, pepper, um, and I did garlic powder because that's like my go-to, right? And I was like, I need this to be good. So all you do is you cut the spine off of the kale, that long stem that goes from the top to the bottom and extends past the leaves. I fold up mine in half and just cut it right off, and then I just broke it apart. Um, so they're different sizes. You know, some are bigger, some are smaller. I'm going to try these. I am a little nervous. Um... Let's see, so you guys are over here talking, let's see. Hi David, be good, Hudson. <laughs> okay, Carol says that kale chips are life. April cannot believe that I'm eating kale. I like kale, April. I've not had kale chips, so I'm gonna try them. Mmm. Oh, okay. Only thing. I like them. They're tasty. Mm-hmm. You want Hmm. The only thing I will say. You like them? I can't give a oh. They're so thin. I would just have to get used to them being so thin. Um. April and Carol. Do you guys eat kale chips instead of potato chips? Like... Would you make a sandwich and have kale chips on the side? They're so thin. That's the only thing. But they're crunchy and they're good. I feel like also I would want more flavor on them. Maybe next time I put onion powder as well. How do you make yours? You used to not like it though. I used to not like kale. <clears throat> I preferred uh, spinach over kale. And then I started trying, I feel like kale was like on sale. Oh, I was at BJ's, which is like Costco. They had a huge thing of kale on sale for like $3. And the spinach was like twice the amount. And I was like, well, this was for my smoothies. So I started getting kale. I tried it in my smoothies. And I actually liked the flavor better in my smoothie than the spinach for some reason. I think after going through that whole bunch, I just got used to it. And I liked it a lot. Um, so then I started getting kale and eating kale in my smoothies and then when I would get smoothies out at like tropical um, smoothie I would get kale instead of spinach so then I started liking kale now I still make spinach instead of kale like for dinner and stuff and I don't I don't I haven't added kale like in any other foods that I eat but I've always wanted to try kale chips because I do remember at Carol and April in a previous show we did talk about kale and I was like mm, I prefer spinach I feel like kale has more uh, taste to it, I guess. So now, um, thanks, you like my hair? My hair is winning. She's still in that shop. Um, people ask me if my hair is real, like at my job, at work. Um, and this guy, every time I wear my hair out, the same guy comes and asks me again because I think he's going to think he's going to catch me up in a lie. And so he'll be like, so all of it, like you don't have any additional pieces, like that is all your hair. I'm like, Robert, do you want to pull it? Like, yes, it's all my hair. I'm like, dude, yes. Thank you, guys. I'm glad you guys like my hair. Guess I'll be wearing it like this. Um, hey, favorite cousin, I love you. Oh, April saying hi. To, I love it when you guys have reunions on here, too. Yes, April, people were looking for you last week, too. Okay, so the kale chips are a hit. Monet likes it. I don't know if the boys will like them. I know. But I like them. Hmm, you want to take them? How do you make your kale? No, no, I am. No, no, I am feeling myself right now. <laughs> or no, no, I am. I'm feeling my hair. I miss, I haven't, my hair has not been out in six weeks. And it came out perfect, so. I'm hashtag winning right now. So, Kale, I mean, Carol says, April, how do you make your kale? So, Carol says, I make mine, drizzle it with um, olive oil and sprinkle it with sea or Himalayan salt. Um, I've seen Himalayan salt. Is that the pink salt, Carol? I've seen Himalayan salt in, I feel like, like, the international grocery store that I go to. What is the difference in Himalayan salt and, like, sea salt? Is it a huge difference? Is it more salty? I feel like, isn't that the one that the salt is much bigger? It's more like rocks? I might be wrong. Um, 
let me know because I will try that. And then do you put anything outside of, I like a whole bunch of flavor. Do you put anything outside of the oil and the salt? Like, I had to put gar garlic powder on mine because I love garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and pepper on. Not even so much pepper, but those are like my go-tos for seasoning stuff. So April drizzles with olive oil and sprinkles with kosher salt. So that's what I did. I did, I did um, kosher sea salt. Okay, so I guess I can make this snack. If the kids like it, um, I'm like not going to torture them and make them eat kale chips only and not like their Cheeto puffs that they love because I like them too. But um, I do have them eating a lot more fruits. Like their, I don't buy the gummy snacks anymore. I try to do healthy but tasty as well. So like who wants to eat healthy and, and not enjoy it? Like you, there's so many healthy foods you can, um, wow, Mona, you just kind of like rocked my whole set. <laughs> there's so many healthy foods that you can have and try. So I'm going, to, I mean, have and like. I'm going to keep, um, I guess I'll keep the, the kale in my life, the kale chips in my life, you guys. I gotta find a little more flavor. And I think I won't, I guess you have to cook, cook them long so it can be more like chips. Um, they were good. Yeah, I've always wanted to good. try it. Monet says they were great. I've always wanted to try it and now I have. All right, let's talk about the solar eclipse. Do you guys know that the solar eclipse is happening on Monday? I hope that you know this. Oh, uh, where did my little thing go? I hope you guys know this. Stay in the know, stay in the now, okay? The solar eclipse, you guys, is happening on Monday the 21st. There is this website um, you can go to and put your your um, zip code in. Torture them equals torture myself. Lies, you do not, girl, that is so true. If I torture them, I torture myself because they're like, mommy, ah. oh gosh. So Carol says, usually nothing more, sometimes sprinkle a little cayenne pepper. Mm. Okay, and April says, if I torture my kids with those chips only, I'm torturing myself, and that is so true. All right, so you can go to this website. I guess I should have found that for you guys. It's not part of my um, current event. But you can go to this website, put in your zip code, and then they'll tell you what percentage uh, chance you have that you will actually see like the whole solar eclipse. I was under the impression everyone in the world could see the solar eclipse. I don't know, maybe not. Um, so I ran across this article um, and let's see, it says an app for visually impaired people to experience the total solar eclipse. So um, I don't know if it's like completely blind, but apparently there's an app. You want everyone to... I've been listening to like different things about the solar eclipse, right? So someone said that it's been like a hundred years since um, we've been able to see the solar eclipse. Don't know how true that is. Um, but there's this guy. Um, he is a solar astrophysicist at Harvard Smithsonian Center um, in Massachusetts. And he linked up with NASA and they decided to come up with this um, app called Eclipse Soundscapes. So Soundscapes tells you that has more to do with obviously the hearing because these people are hearing are um, visually impaired, right? So it's a two pronged project that will, mul that will make multi-sensory experiences available to sight impaired both during and after the eclipse. So I think it's cool just off of that, that they can know, they can not only experience the eclipse as it's happening, but they also have like an after party <laughs> for the eclipse um, for this app. So what you do is you download the app, um, and then during the eclipse, I'm gonna read this because I don't wanna get it wrong, um, you will use the, the phone's GPS to geolocate the user to let her know where she is relative to the path of, t I like that they say it her, they usually say he, uh, girl power. Path of totality, a narrow corridor that will extend from Oregon to South Carolina. Although the eclipse uh, from beginning to end will last a few hours. So if you guys do like your research or you look it up, um, I know like when I was younger, I thought it was just something that happened real quick, real quickly. So it's like, I thought it was like sun, moon, eclipse, over. But apparently it's something that happens over an hour and do not judge me. Um, because I learned later that it's not. Um, although ecli the eclipse from beginning to end will last a few hours, depending on the location, anyone in the path will experience darkness at the disk of the as the disk of the moon completely covers the sun for about two to two and a half minutes. You have no time to 
have your eyes anywhere else. You're going to miss it. Um, those north and south of the band will have a chance at a partial eclipse. So everyone's not going to see a complete eclipse. Some people will be able to see the partial eclipse. So how the uh, app works is users can hear and feel the outline of the moon in front of the sun as well as hear and feel phenomena that typically draw millions of eclipse chasers from around the world. First of all, why are there eclipse chasers? Didn't know that existed. To the path, path of totality. Um, sorry, I lost my spot. Okay, for example, the diamond ring effect happens just before and after totality when a bright outpouring of sunlight bursts from one small, small area along a thin ring of sunlight. Let me see if I can show you guys this picture. Uh, I don't know how it's going to look for you guys, but you'll probably see all of my lights. Um, that's a picture of the ring they're talking about, you guys. Yeah, definitely just knocked over my flower. Um, yeah, oh, it, oh, you guys can see it well. And you couldn't even see all my lights. So let's get to the... Okay. Um, so they'll be able to feel it and, and hear it. Um, the sign says it's not once the event is over. Right now, anyone can sign up on the website. Anyone, you don't have to be visually impaired, to be a citizen scientist during the eclipse. Recording sounds that occur during the eclipse. Um, instructions for how to make recordings. So um, I guess they're trying, I think this is really cool. They're trying to get people in different areas to um, record sounds in your area of the eclipse. So instructions on how to make recordings are available on the Eclipse Soundscape site. Do you guys want me to post that site for you guys? As are a series of, a series of active listening exercises. So those are um, also for the visually impaired. Listening exercises to help anyone become more aware of the visual and audible changes that may occur during an eclipse. Um, it says anybody who records their local soundscape with whatever tool they have will be invited to share that on our website. I think this is really, really, really cool. Um, I should share this with you guys. Let's see. Uh, I guess I can do it here. I'm going to share this website with you guys right now. I'm going to put it in the notes because um, I think it's really cool. Like, April, you're in England. You should record it over in your area. So I'm trying to be cute with this little tablet and my fingers are like thick. <laughs> Why do I have thick fingers? Never know. And I can't type well. April's in England. Um, I think I saw that Aaron is on here. Aaron is in England. You guys can totally do it in England, and then we can do it over here on the East Coast of the United States of America. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna send you guys this. It's stressing me out. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you later. I'll put it in the comments later after the show. Or I, actually, I'll just put it on my Facebook um, page. Um, but it's Eclipse. The the website is Eclipse Soundscape. Oh wait, hold on. The website is EclipseSoundscapes.org. That's where you're going to go. And then the app as well is called Eclipse Soundscapes. So you can download the app and you can go to the website and learn more information about this. I just thought it was really cool. You know, um, a lot of us take advantage of certain things. You know, we take advantage of the fact that we can see. I see just fine with my um, eyes without my glasses. I do wear glasses because I have a, a small astigmatism and I wear that um, glasses at work when I'm on a computer but I was just like oh I can't wait to see the eclipse but you don't think about the people who can't see the eclipse. The fact that this guy in NASA decided to join together and um, make, the ex make the people who are visually impaired allow for them to experience it in their own way I think it's, it's really really beautiful. That's why I wanted to share it with you guys um, that they're thinking about other people. So this is, I thought this is really, really dope. I thought it was dope. All right, so, and I, so let's see what's going on over here. Um, so Carol says, Himalayan, oh, with the salt, Him Himalayan has more natural benefits, better for eliminated toxins in the body. Himalayan salt, says Carol, has more natural benefits, better for eliminating toxins in the body. So do you cook with it regularly? I did not know that. Um, Carol says, I thought it was 26 years, or is it 62 years? I heard it was like it's been 100 years since a complete solar eclipse. 
Um, Carol says, oh, there's different ones. The annual solar eclipse was the past this past February. The total solar eclipse is tomorrow. Right. So for the total solar eclipse, I think I was listening to like NPR News. And I think they're the ones who said it was 100 years or maybe I was reading something. But for some reason, I remember someone saying it was like 100 years. I think it's cool. I don't remember ever experiencing it. Um, Carol says the total, total solar eclipse happens every 18 months. The catch is that they aren't always visible to us. So maybe that's what it is. That's what it is. I think they said it's been 100 years since we've been able to see it. I don't know. I need to go back and read, apparently. Um, how do you guys feel about, I, I know you know that people are selling solar eclipse glasses. Monique, can you go get the glasses that you guys oh, got? Yeah. Thank you, love. So people are selling solar eclipse glasses. Um, I already know that there's husbands out there that are like, solar eclipse glasses, get your solar eclipse glasses, $3, $3, that are not solar. They're probably like 3D glasses. You guys, be careful when buying these solar eclipse glasses. My kids went to a library event yesterday, and they actually gave out solar eclipse glasses for them. I'm going to, um, and so I put them, I don't have any. I heard that they're like sold out everywhere. Bed Bath & Beyond had them. Uh, I don't know if Walmart had them. Target wasn't selling them. Um, but apparently you need to, just one, you need to wear solar eclipse glasses. These sunglasses are called the Eclipser. Um, you can get them off of eclipseglasses.com. So the front of them are silver. The back of them are black. And then when you put them on, so I put them on yesterday. I literally can see nothing. I can't see. Monet, put up fingers. Mm -hmm. However many fingers you want. How many fingers do I have? Come over here and put the fingers in front of in front of my eyes. How many fingers do I have? I'm gonna say one. Five. See? I, and I was not faking it. You can't see anything. So I apparently these are solar eclipse glasses. These are called the Eclipser. It says, get Eclipse totally. My kids got them for free at the library. Um, maybe check your local library and see if they're giving them out. Um, but people are, I heard that they're like 15 bucks. So they go up to like no. 15 bucks. So why, they're like $2. Well, yours were, but some people have them for like 15 bucks. Um, which, it's crazy. I'm not, I guess it just depends. You guys have, know how I am with money. Um, especially if it's only going to last two to two and a half minutes. But I guess it also is an experience that you're, not gonna always get so it's my three kids have um, glasses I'll just be snatching theirs for a couple of seconds to see it so that is that is the chat um, okay so more information in April says only 11 states will experience the total solar eclipse Idaho Nebraska Kansas Missouri Illinois Kentucky Tennessee Georgia North Carolina South Carolina and then Carol says one of my friends bought some from overseas the solar eclipse glasses um, because she wa she wants top of the line, but she had to buy them in bulk. She's a family of five, and now she has 20 to give away. Bless her heart. I would like some. Um, everyone else will experience a partial eclipse. So my state was not mentioned in the, the 11 states that are doing the um, total solar eclipse. So I guess I will be experiencing the partial eclipse. I just want my kids to be able to see, to see it. Um, and Carol, I think that that's really funny, but I like that she's giving them away and not selling them. That's really cool. I wish I could have some. What, what sell, what's the difference between Giving them away sell? is just saying, here, here, I have extra. You can have them. Selling is like $2.99, $3.99, not for free. Come and get, I, give me, I, don't, I don't get change. No checks. Um, I love that Monday's here live. Okay, so that's, uh, April says everyone else. Okay, we said that. All right, so... This is not going to be a long show. We're um, actually on the chat topic, which is just things that you can do to make life easier. <clears throat> now, these will probably benefit the person that um, cooks in the home, that's always running the errands, that's um, cleaning up in the home. You. That would be me. Yes, mm -hmm. Monet. <laughs> Charles doesn't like to shop. He doesn't like to leave the house. Um, so, four, these, here's the deal. I'm going to give you guys four. <laughs> I know Carol, I know April, I know whoever else is watching, I know there are other things that you guys do in your life that makes life easier. These are small things um, that make your life easier. So you guys share yours as well. The first one is something new, is have someone run your errands for you. There are actually companies now that um, hire people to contract them out to run your errands for you. This one particular, um, there was this guy in Target I was talking to, and he was like, have you ever heard of, I can't remember the name, I wrote it down, I don't know where it is, but he uh, wanted to know if Target 
will allow for people to pick up his online orders in the store. You know how you can order stuff online and get it delivered to the store. And to pick it up at Target, you have to bring your ID and give your last name. Well, they don't really check your ID all of the time. Sometimes you can just give your last name, but you do need to bring it just in case. He wanted to know if he would have issues if someone else picked it up for him that's like not him. I didn't know the answer to that. But then he and I got to talking and he was like, yeah, there's this company, they'll run your errands for you. And I'm like, what? He's like, they'll grocery shop for you. They will pick up uh, toilet tissue for you. They will drop stuff off for you. They will pick up like in-store orders for you. All of that stuff, they do it for you. And I'm like, are you kidding me? He's like, it's so inexpensive and it's worth um, it's worth the money. And so I'm like, I got to thinking, I'm like, you know what? That makes sense. I spent a lot of my life, not just like day to day. I mean, a lot of my life goes to running errands, whether I'm dropping stuff off at the Goodwill, which I've had a bag in my trunk for about two weeks now that I need to drop off at Goodwill. I have driven past Goodwill a million trillion times. Whether it's dropping stuff off at Goodwill, um, going and grabbing dinner for the day um, because I didn't plan my dinner out, or going and get um, uniform pants for, the, for, for Aaron, or picking something up for Monet for Girl Snacks for Girl Scouts. I am always running errands. I feel like that's like, it's, it's something that every single day I'm running an errand. So there's one particular company that I looked up. It's called TaskRabbit.com. And um, there's actually a waiting list for people who actually want to do this. And actually, let me give you guys some numbers. You know I like to give you guys um, numbers. numbers. Um, so basically what they do, it says they connect you to safe and reliable help in your neighborhood. So they vet everyone. It's not just like random people signing up like, yeah, I'm going um, to sign up for this task rabbit. And then when I get, I'm going to rob them for everything they got. It's not like that. They actually get vetted. They do background checks. And so you can go on here and it's a task rabbit. So they're not just running your errands, although that's and you can do that. They can come and put together your IKEA furniture. They can um, help you pack your your stuff up instead of um, getting like a whole moving company. You can just ask, let's say, like two task managers to come help you box stuff up. Um, handyman stuff. They can come and fix stuff. Yard work, installations, home improvement. So, <clears throat> actually, let me go here. I thought it was really really cool because, um, like, I would use it. Oh, so DC, they're in DC. They're not in, they're not um, nationwide yet. You would have to go on their website and see if you, um, if they have it in your area. So how it works, you choose from a variety of home services and select the date and time you'd like a qualified tasker to shop, uh, to show up. Give us details and we'll find you the help. And then, um, that's step one, and then step two is to get matched, right? So it says select from a list of qualified and fully vetted taskers on the job. Choose taskers by their hourly rate. So each tasker has their own hourly rate. You decide how much you want to pay someone, which I like. It's not just a flat fee, like minimum $50 an hour. So you decide, I'm assuming that it says start chatting with them right, um, right in the app. This is very similar to um, the app that I use. Oh, what was it called? Dog vacay for one of my puppies um you go online everyone has their own profile they charge different rates and you can look at their um their ratings that they've gotten from people that they've used before you know one to five stars you can read reviews you can see photos that they have um, you see if they're qualified or not what kind of home they live in it seems like it's very similar to that um, and then num step number three it says get it done just like that your tasker arrives and gets the job done when your task is complete Payment will happen seamlessly and securely through the app, which I like as well. It's all done through the app, and they don't pay you don't pay them until it's complete. So it's not like you pay up front and then they come and do a half job, um, or you pay up front and they just don't show up at all. It's after it's done is when you process the payment, which mm, I really, really, great. really like. So they have. Um, Home cleaning, delivery service, bartending, event help and wait staff, heavy lifting, deliver big pieces of furniture. I love, you saw that? I got that mommy eye, Carol. I think that this is such an awesome idea. So so let me tell you how um, someone, the girl came up with this. She's 31 years old. She used to work for IBM. She quit her job. The way that she came up with it is that um, she and her husband, they both were, were working full time and forgot that they needed to pick up dog food for the dog. And she was like, uh, they, I think she said they were like, man, I wish someone in the neighborhood or we could just pay someone to go get the dog food. And four months later, she quit her job, 
moved her uh, from IBM, moved to Silicon Valley. She received, I think it was like $5 million fund, um, not fundraiser, some type of money that Facebook was giving out for um, startup companies. And she got that. And so now she's 31 and she's like rolling in the dough. That's such a simple idea. They always say that ideas come from something that uh, is thought of in the same very manner. So the first way to make life easier is have someone run your errands for you. TaskRabbit.com. Check them out. Um, they're not the only ones who do the service, but um, that's the one that I I looked up and I thought was um, legit to share with you guys. All right. So yes, April, it was a grant. Hey, Ry. Hey, Rylan. Um, so I thought that the, I I might just try them out. I feel like I'll get addicted, um, but I'm going to try task, task grab it out for sure. All right. The second thing to make your life easier, um, and th this all depends on if you, actually it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you live by yourself. I have a family of five. So there are my husband and myself, the three kids, and now we also have two puppies. And I feel like I'm always cleaning. They have chores, but um, it's a difference in then kids doing their chores and you cleaning your house, right? So I'll get up sometimes at like 6.30, I'm an early bird, walk the puppies, and last weekend, um, I was in here, I was doing the dishes, I was scrubbing the um, Mr. Clean Eraser on everything, I was bleaching stuff. Um, so the second one is have someone help you clean, you can get maid service. I will not lie. At first I'm like, I'm not gonna pay someone to clean my house. Like, I can clean my house just fine. But as I'm getting older and more busy and just like tired of repeating myself and chores being done halfway, um, I don't think maid service, I'm finding that maid service is, is okay to get without being hard on yourself, you know, without feeling like I was feeling like, not guilty, but kind of like um, maybe I failed, like I don't need anyone to come clean my house, I can clean my house. I have girlfriends that get maid service and they're like, it's life. It's day and night. It's helping you. It's helping you to be less stressed. You come home to a clean house um, and then you just upkeep it. So you can get a uh, Groupon always has really good deals on maid service. I know that April said, I, April, I think you said you've got done maid service before. My girlfriend Najma gets maid service. Um, one of my girlfriends, um, who else did that? April. Najma, I can't remember who else said that they get maid service done and says that it's just like day and night. You can go on Groupon. They always, always, always have good deals for maid service if you just want to try it out. Oh, my sister Danielle get, got maid service. You don't have to get it. You choose how often you want to get it. You can get it weekly. You can get it um, bi-weekly. You can get it once a month. It's completely, you can get it only when you're having out of time guests, out of town guests, that, that deep cleaning that they do. Um, but that will make your life easier. Just check it out, try it out, go on Groupon, get a discount. And um, I'm really, really, really said that I'm going to treat myself to maid service. Um, I may do it before the end of the year. Um, it, it's worth it. <clears throat> I know for me it's going to be worth my peace of mind. It will also keep my home um, less stressful because when I come home, if it's a hot mess, you guys know Travis homeschools the two oldest kids. They're home all the time outside of, you know, field trips and stuff. And so if I come home and the house is a mess, like I'm so annoyed. My, my attitude changes. I'm fussing. And then that changes the whole dynamic of the whole household. Everyone's just like, nerves are bad. So if I get maid service, it will make my life easier. April is over here saying yes with an exclamation point. Right, April? So task rabbit, have someone to run your errands for you and try out maid service. Why not? Um, all right. Number three is huge. Um, it's, and this is what I really want to, well, number three and four, because I'm only giving you four, can go hand in hand. Also, I'll do number four, grocery shop for the week. So this is something that I do. Um, I grocery shop for the week, and this helps to, uh, planning out my dinners, this helps to avoid going to make like last minute grocery store shop, grocery store um, trips every day or every other day, which I find myself doing if I don't do this. Um, it saves money on eating out because if you've had a long day at work and you didn't plan out for dinner then and you didn't go grocery shopping for the week, then you're going to eat out and that adds up, right? So when I say grocery shop for the week, I grocery shop on Sundays just from Sunday through Saturday, just for that week. Um, a lot of times if you do huge grocery shopping, you end up wasting food, not using all your food. It goes bad before you can use it. So that's one of the reasons why I do this. So what I do is I plan out... Um, of course, the kids, you know, they have snack and take care of breakfast and snack. But I specifically plan out dinner, like by the recipe. Um, I go on Pinterest. I have a lot of stuff pinned on my um, board. It's called, 
for the like dinner hits, things that I've tried and the kids like. And so I'll go in there and I'll decide what meals I'm gonna make. I make my grocery list only from those recipes. And then I go and only get those items for dinner. And I plan out, so I work um, part-time as well. I have a full-time job, but I also work part-time. That's our travel money these days. Um, and so when I have to work at my second job, those are days that I get up in the morning and I throw food in the crock pot because I still want to make sure that I'm taking care of home um, and that my family's getting good, good, hearty meals. So crock pot meals is number three. Um, but I make sure that I plan out. Breakfast is easy. I just make sure I have like oatmeal and cereal and waffles. Um, and eggs and they can make their, their breakfast that way. Lunch is easy too. I do plan out their lunch, not to the detail like dinner. I just make sure they have lunch food. But dinner is the most expensive meal that you're, that you're gonna buy when you eat out, right? Breakfast usually is not as much. Lunch is usually not as much. Dinner will get to your pockets, especially if you're doing it more than once a week. If you grocery shop for the week, it makes your life easier for the rest of the week because you don't even have to think about, if you do have to think about dinner, you're like, okay, what of the five, six meals, um, what am I going to make? I already have the stuff at home. Which one am I going to do? You can get task rabbit person to do your grocery shopping for the week if you want. Just make the list and tell them you need these, these items and they can get it done for you. I'm just saying we can mix one, two, three, and four. We can do all four of these guys. So um, grocery shopping for the week, try it out. Try it out. I feel like it also saves money because you're not over shopping. Um, you can get coupons on Sundays and uh, Sunday morning, say before church, and spend the afternoon clipping your coupons and grocery shop Sunday evening. All of this works out. It all saves money and it saves time and you're, you can just come home from work and either cook or heat the food up and be over and done with it. Instead of, which I told you guys, instead of from work having to go to the grocery store, stand in line because everybody else is in the grocery store, and then getting home late and then cooking dinner late and then everyone eating late. Grocery shop for the week. Um, and then crock pot meals. So crock pot meals, I mentioned already. I love, um, I I used to have two. I have one, one of them was broken. Um, but I love to do crock pot meals, especially during the school year because the kids are in extracurricular activities. If your kids are doing sports, they have practice. Um, there's homework that you have to do after work, uh, with the kids after work. Um, and dinner is done. You get home and it's done. So when I do my crock pot meals, I put them on before work. I cook them on low. They cook all day. And when I get home, I just put it on warmer. I tell hubby to turn it on warm around four o'clock, depending on what time I started it. And dinner is done. It makes your life easier because you don't have to cook. You can just come home, plate the food, eat, and still have your whole evening where you can, like I said, help with homework or just hang out with your family. So um, crock pot meals, you guys. And then April... Actually, I wanted to mention another one, a fifth one. There's something keeps flying in front of my face. Um, it's doing frozen meals. You can go on Pinterest, and there's uh, so many people do this. You um, prepare your meals in advance. A whole bunch of meals. You just cook. I don't know if you'll spend a whole day or a weekend, but you can cook loads of food, put them in freezer bags, write the instructions like heat oven on 450, pop in the oven on uh, Pop it in the oven on 450 for 45 minutes, you know. Um, you can do that, especially like for me, um, for my part-time if I'm not home in the evening, Travis, I'll just say, hey, just grab some out the freezer and they can still have a really good hearty meal. So that's another thing that can make your life easier. Three of these have to do with food because um, I'm always cooking, which I love to do. But that's another way thing you can do is just like prepare your meals in advance. I know my sister prepares her lunches in advance uh, for the week. But... Doing things in advance um, does free up a lot of time for your week, and you can use that time in whatever way you want. So having someone run your errands, task taskrabbit.com, having someone run your, um, sorry, clean your home, get a maid service, try Groupon, crock pot meals, and grocery shopping for the week, you guys, are for, oh, and making frozen dinners, um, preparing frozen dinners in advance are five ways to make your life easier that I think we should all try to implement at least two to three of these. Yeah, April says freezer meals, yes, 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 which I still have yet to do. April and I have talked about this. April has told me so many times that it's like, it's a hit, because April has two, two young children as well, and she works, she's a working mother and a military wife, and that is like, which means sometimes you're a single mother if your husband's out on TDY, right? So um, freezer meals, I know they're a hit, have I tried them? No, but guess what I'm gonna do this school year? Try the freezer meals, especially since I'm working a little extra. April says lasagna is a great frozen meal and I add spinach in my sauce. 
chopped veggies and already added. So chopped veggies. I have a question. Do you make and freeze the sauce as well? That's a good, that's a good question, isn't it? Oshan says, my wife does this all the time, freezer meals. Freezer meals are a lifesaver. So maybe we should have a freezer meal club where we um, share freezer meals, the, the ones that our families. And Oshan, you guys have four kids. So I really need your wife to let me know in what quantity, how long it lasts, what you cannot, what's not good to do a freezer. So like, if I wanted to do a pasta, a pasta dish, I guess I guess I'm about to answer my own question. I guess April answered it. If um, you do lasagna, I guess pasta does do okay well. So what do you thaw? Do you thaw it out and then cook it, or can it go straight from the um, freezer to the oven? And then so Carol says I do that often in the fall. Soups, chili stews, freeze and go. We still have <clears throat> we still have to do our crock pot sister time. April says or shop online and pick up in the store. Yes, so I've actually shopped online and had them deliver it to our home before. Giant has it, it's called Peapod. Safeway has it as well, um, where you can grocery shop online. And I was doing this when I was very pregnant. We didn't have a car and it was winter time. And so um, I would grocery shop online, Trav would be home for them to deliver it. And that was like such a lifesaver. Um, so yeah, that's very smart too. Osha says my wife spit the noodles in the sauce, but she freezes both. So she makes the noodles and freezes those in a separate bag than the sauce. And then, so I guess you put the sauce in the pan. Excuse me, guys, my allergies are acting up. You put the sauce in the pot and just heat it up so it can go back to its um, original form. And then the noodles, what do you, how do you defrost pasta noodles, you guys? That's good to know. April says potatoes don't do well in the freezer. How do you defrost the pasta noodles? Oh, Sean, did she put them in, um, back in water? Or do you just put them in the microwave on defrost? Do you just run hot water on them to, so they can defrost out? Uh, April says that chili does well in the freezer. Yes, it does. Mom does chili in the freezer. These are really good to know, you guys. So this fall, I think I'm going to, ooh, maybe I'll do fall, the fall, set, the fall um, season, which is coming up next month. I will do some freezer meals. We'll do some freezer meals. I think that that's a good idea. I really, really do need to try it out. No, for real, I do. So chili is something good, lasagna is good, apparently pasta. Uh, oh, so April says, yes, make meat sauce and freeze it. Then you can use it for spaghetti. Oh. Red beans in the freezer. Um, just make rice the day of. April, these are awesome. So I need uh, April, uh, Carol, Oshan, and Oshan, I can't remember your wife's name. Um, Oshan says she just sits it out and lets it sit out or she blanches them in hot water for the pasta. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do these. I really want to do the, the chili and the pasta thing that because those are things that I make for my family. Um, I'm glad you said potatoes don't do well in the freezer, April. But um, meat sauce, yeah, I can do. And I, the thing is, I like to cook, so I'll get a glass of wine, turn my music on, and I don't mind cooking like a whole bunch of different meals and putting them in the freezer. I'm, this is a project that I'm going to do for the fall, fall season. We are going to do freezer meals. Thank you guys for all of your suggestions. If you have specific meals that you think that I should try, um, let me know. So Carol says, also, when you're making foods with fresh veggies, and you have the tips left over, so onions, carrots, celery, pepper. Save peppers. Save them and put them in the freezer. You can use it at a late. You can use it later for seasoning your food or creating a broth for soups or stews. So you can just throw them in the freezer bag all together and freeze them. So I need to go get some freezer bags, and then I need to get my life and freeze some meals. I don't know why I haven't done this yet, you guys. I have three kids and I'm always cooking and they're always eating. Um, and it would make it much easier on my life. And for, for Travis, when I'm not home, if I forget to put, because I have forgotten to put stuff in the crock pot. Like I, per, I have purchased things for crock pot meals and forgotten to throw them in the crock pot. And um, it was a, a total fail. It was like, oh, uh, you guys gonna have to have hot dogs or a cereal for dinner because I, I forgot to do it. All together, that's such a good idea, Carol. That's such a good idea. All your scraps from your fresh veggies. 
throw them in the freezer and use them as soup. That's something else. I've never made my own soup. I've made um, cheddar broccoli soup, which was the bomb.com from scratch. But I've never made like um, any other soup outside of that. I have a lot of them pinned on my Pinterest. I have a whole cookbook for soups. But I've not ever made soup. So Oshan says a vacuum sealer is a good investment if you like making frozen meals. And they sell those at a good price now. I, I know they used to be very expensive, but now I think you can get them for a really, really good price. I'm really excited about this. I don't even think you guys understand how my life, like, I already get excited over crock pot meals, but the fact that um, I'm about to change my entire life by making these freezer meals, I am excited. I am excited. So now I'm going to go on Pinterest. I actually downloaded just the other day, you guys, on Pinterest, I um, pinned, this lady had made like 46 meal, frozen meals. Let me see if I can go to it real quick. And I can share it with you guys. Um, let's see. It was like frozen dinners. Where is she at? Her Facebook food. Right here, I think. All right, where is it at? I know I... Know I I know I saw it on here. You can go, you can Google it, you can go on Pinterest. Um, so here's one, over 20 make ahead freezer meals for your busy family. There's a pizza on, oh, duh, you can do pizza, frozen pizza. April says making homemade chicken noodle soup this week because England doesn't believe in summer. Oh, England, get it together. All right, so here's some things that this lady's made. Let's see, um, well, she has lasagna, taco, taco casserole, lemon pesto chicken freezer table, freezer table meal, um, whole wheat calzones. Oh, so there's calzones. Um, what is this? Chicken enchiladas. Oh my gosh, pot pie. So I am the queen of homemade chicken pot pies. I actually don't make chicken pot pies anymore. I make steak pot pies and you would get your entire life. Someone on here has pot pies. I didn't think about doing that. Um, homemade frozen pizzas, uh, jalapeno popper chicken casserole. I don't think I'm gonna be making all these casseroles. Chicken Parmesan freezer meal. I just made chicken Parmesan the other day. Looks like they made theirs just like I made mine. Oh my gosh. I cannot, this, I can't wait to make these. Um, so Carol says, thanks April, I'm sure I'm not the, the first, but it came to me and I was like, let me see if this works. That's awesome, Carol. That's a really, really good idea. I'm gonna make this stuff. Somebody has a lasagna, April. DIY freezer peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, AKA Oh, those crustles. are the best. Oh, these are the ones I see in the freezer section that I'm like, I'm not about to pay all this money so for frozen pb and j's but i can try it out for the kids because i will be doing chicken broccoli and bacon potato bake you guys it's endless i will be doing coming up um for those who have kids and for those who who actually it can be for anyone but for those who have kids i'll be doing um, we make our son's lunch every day and so we've always made our kids lunch so i'm going to be doing some um remixes on school lunches um, and then I'm also going to do some remixes on adult lunches to encourage you guys to take your lunch to work instead of eating out every day. You guys, freezer cooking Mexican lasagna. So that's coming up. I'm going to go. The show is over. I can talk to you guys all day. I have somewhere I have to be in an hour, so I've got to go. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. I wanted to leave you guys with a quote. Um, so this just says... Relax, don't be so hard on yourself. You're living and learning. Forgive yourself and grow from the experience. That is my encouragement to you guys. We are very hard on ourselves, especially when we do something that's we know that we knew better in the beginning and we went on and went through it with it and did it anyways. Um, I always ask God for forgiveness and he forgives right away, you guys know that. But I don't always forgive myself right away. I will sometimes um, still hold like um, guilt about it i'll just be kicking myself like man you knew better like why did you do that or come on chrissy you gotta do better so i want to encourage you guys and i'm encouraging myself to relax and not be hard on yourself um 
every life is a is a learning experience so you are learning as you go hopefully we're not continuing to make the same mistakes over and over however when we do god still forgives us um but try not to continue to make those mistakes over and over again i love you guys thank you so much for hanging out with me thank you for watching the show um real quick I, uh, carol says when you do, make sure to put the results on the show. We would love to see your work. I actually think I'm going to do an entire show. Um, maybe I'll just do like a Friday evening show, um, cooking with Christy or cooking with Mo, and we'll do freezer meals. We'll make a few freezer meals, and then we'll freeze them. And then um, every week we on the show, I'll feature one of the freezer meals. What do you think? I think that that's a good yeah. idea. Carol says, great show. Glad I was able to catch it live today. I always enjoy talking with you and your viewers. It's like a family reunion every Sunday with strangers. Thank you so much. That means everything to me. I love, love that you said that. Let me just share with you guys. Yesterday morning, um, it had to be really early because I was still laying in the bed. And someone had hit me up, a girlfriend that I went to school with in California, I think it was California. Um, she hit me up on Facebook and we were talking about hair. She was complimenting my hair. So we were just talking about hair. And then she encouraged me and she's like, um, I love watching your vlog. You know, I watch it, um, keep doing a good job. I, and I didn't even know she watched ever. I, I didn't know that, I would have never even thought that she watched it. We don't talk all of the time. We don't. We're friends. Like, I'll like stuff on her page. She'll like things on mine. We went to school together. She's such a sweet girl. And she doesn't live far from me. I knew she had moved away. And she was like, girl, I live down the street now. So, But just when God uses other people to speak to you, and my sisters and my family encourage me all of the time, people that I know. Um, oh, Sean says, keep it going. Proud of you. April says, same here. I never catch it live anymore. Um, but when God uses people that you don't talk to regularly, um, not your everyday, um, your everyday, like your family and your friends that you regularly talk to, it really, 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 really moves me. Um, I don't, we don't talk, oh, she's such a, a, a nice girl, we don't talk all the time, and she reached out about my hair, and then she didn't have to tell me that, that she watched my show, and like, I love your vlog, but it really, really, that's been happening to me more and more more and more lately and I really really appreciate it and I get really really moved because I know that that's God whispering to me like keep doing it just stick with it and that's what I'm trying to do you guys are really helping me to do that I'm getting emotional so I'm gonna go I love you Monet thank you sweetie for helping me today did I do good you did awesome she wants to make sure she's gonna get paid <laughs> bye you guys love you I'll see you next week four o'clock eastern standard time share the video